I decided to take a stroll and swing by my buddy Diamante's place. Dave is a winning announcer himself and no stranger to the Brooklyn Nets. Not only is Dave an accomplished sports announcer, this guy runs one of New York's finest cigar lounges and there's nothing like a good old stogie at the end of the day. What makes the Bihike special is called Medio Tiempo and it comes from the very, very top of the tobacco plant. Okay. But the problem with it is, it's very rare because not all tobacco plants have the, they're the two little, little leaves at the very top. They're even above the lajero of, on a tobacco plant. So they get all the sunlight, they get all the flavor. They almost turn like, like raisiny when they get fermented. They're, they're incredible, very rich, and that's what gives this cigar, it's wonderful flavor, and they drive old cars in Cuba. Of course. So this is a 57 this is called a Chevy. Fatingo. There you go. And because you brought Cohibas, I got you this little uh, handmade Cohiba cigar holder. Wow. So you got that, Thank and you, and you can put inside one of the Diamante specials. It's a nice mild cigar. It's a robusto. I've traveled all over, you traveled all over, but recently you just got back from Asia. Yes. Can you tell me about some of the food experiences that you had? Oh. Because I see some pictures, bro, that was just nuts. <laughs> yeah, I had a great trip, man. So first I flew to Beijing and went to the Forbidden City, Tiananmen Square, the Great Wall of China. That was great. Food in China is amazing. Then I flew to Ho Chi Minh City, Saigon, Vietnam. Right. So I'm over there. I buy a motorcycle. I ride through Vietnam. I go into Cambodia. I went to Phnom Penh went up to Siem Reap, back to Madame Penh, back to Vietnam. But while I was there, there was some crazy food. Cambodia, they, they'll pretty much eat anything. I mean, oh they got a lot God. of different things on the menu. Kidding. I ate tarantula, they had fried bat, oh, there's fuck. scorpions, oh, there's snakes, God. there's larva, there's crickets. There's a lot of different stuff. Tell me something, Nate. You've been calling fights for 15 years. Back in the old days, there's been more wars, it was more slugging. Nowadays, it's more, it's becoming more of a sweet science. What do you think that is? I mean, obviously now you have a guy like Mayweather. He's a, he's a scientist. You have a Lomachenko, he's a scientist. You got a Rigondeaux, he's a scientist. So we have those guys. But we also had a Katsidis. We also had a Bam Bam Rios. We also had a Tim Bradley. You know, not that Tim Bradley can't do both, but- A Kodo. You know, to me, my favorite fighters were guys that really did both well. Like Sugar Ray Leonard, to me. That guy, he could box I think you. he's one of the best pound for pound. He was, he's my favorite. You know, you can't walk through the rain and not get wet. You're gonna get hit. But what it is, it's like those little angles, right? Those little eighths of sixteenths of an inches. So you're gonna, you're gonna right. take shots. Oh, of course. But, but a lot of times, you're going back, so you're taking the shot, but it's yeah. not, but it's you're not. Catching it you're catching it at an angle, yeah, and yeah. that's what you want to take the, 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 the pepper off of it. You right. know what I mean? You want to take the mustard off of it. You don't want that full contact knockout shot. All right, Canelo Triple G, who wins and why? This is not only a good matchup, it's the best fighting the best. These are the two top guys. It's like two freight trains going head to head. And it's hard to say because both guys have a lot of strengths and both guys have, have some deficiencies. You know, I think Danny Jacobs kind of exposed Triple G. Canelo, I like him. I think he's been getting better. I think it's anyone's. I think it's a 50-50 right now.